One of the most popular claims for astrology is that it can guide you through your love life. Every day, hundreds of copies of books on this aspect of astrology alone are sold. Please welcome my final guest, the author of books such as Love Lies and the Seduction, the Seductive, pardon me, Art of Astrology, Carol Golder. Pairs of star signs more compatible than others? Yes, I think they definitely are. Even in some sign astrology, which in fact is all we've got time to do here tonight. But yes, they are. Carol has kindly agreed to do a demonstration for us tonight. We scour the countryside to find 12 blissfully married couples. And despite the odds, we found them... we have here is one man from each of the 12 astrological signs, accompanied by his better half. Now, gentlemen, please move to your star signs, taking your wives with you. So, Carol, we've given you the zodiac signs for all of the wives. What have you done with this information? Well, I think I've probably broken up a few happy relationships, actually, without meaning to, but who knows? We're soon going to discover. I see. So you've read the signs, and you've figured out who they should be compatible with. I've done a little generalization on the signs, and as I said before, some signs are more compatible than others. So with all of the ladies now, please move to the astrological sign that Carol says they should be... How do you think the person in this photo is living or dead? Our last guest tonight believes that by looking at a photograph, she can tell us something about the person in that photo, including whether or not that person is alive or dead. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Agnes Freeman. Agnes, earlier in the day, we gave you five photographs, the smaller versions of the ones we now have behind us. Choosing the photograph is a difficult task. We try to ensure that as few clues as possible remain. Surroundings, clothing, hairstyle may all give a clue as to the age of a photograph. And thus, the likelihood as to whether or not the person is living or dead might be given away. I believe you used a pendulum to divine whether or not each person is living or dead? Productive. Now, how does that work? Um, if the person is alive, the pendulum is turning usually right. If the person is dead, either it's not turning at all, or I don't get any kind of reading on the person. So it's whether or not the aura. I see. Now, Agnes has told us that if she is successful tonight, she would like to go on to a second test, independently supervised, to claim the $10,000 that I have offered for many years to anyone who can produce psychic phenomena under controlled conditions. Is that right, Agnes? That's right. All right. Well, first things first. Let's see how well you'll do with just five photographs. Now, there are tough odds again, lady. I hope you're correct. Now, on number two here, we have a young gentleman um, of unknown profession. What would you tell us about him? Well, he's very much alive. And uh, what I would be...
visited the privately funded Metaphysical and Psychic Research Center in Berkshire, whose principal, Norman Knight, has been involved in psychic research for over 30 years. The center was founded in 1973. It was founded because we found that there was a, a, a lot wanting as far as um, uh, psychic and spiritual healing was concerned. And this is why we involved ourselves with research and investigation into this phenomenon. The ultimate goal, of course, is to, to bring some tangible substance to this intangible subject. Most of this equipment here came through um, times when I was in deep contemplation. And this particular object is our table that we levitate, and it moves around the room, under certain circumstances, of course. What you're in the mood for with the all new Royal Crispy Chicken lineup at Burger King? You can't go wrong. Classic. Now, the eternal question is there life after death? Tonight, we'll be meeting people. Now, the eternal question is there life after death? Tonight, we'll be meeting people who say they can look back into the past, reach into the future, and move between life and death. First, is this a picture of a dear departed soul? We begin our quest with a lady who sketches what she believes to be portraits of... So much of the information we get from astrology is fairly general and subjective, yet increasingly business people consult astrologers for guidance in their financial affairs. In France, 10% of companies now take astrological advice on everything from takeovers to stock market location to pit the skills of a financial astrologer against those of a city analyst. We gave them five weeks to... Some psychics go so far as to offer help to the police. In order to see how useful this is, we prepared an experiment using this collection of instruments which might have been used to commit crimes. And then again, they might not. Is it possible for a psychic to read the history of an instrument just by touching? My final guest claims to be able to do this. Please welcome Nella Jones. It seems that you can do a lot of reading about writing. Any bookstore or library today offers a great selection of books on personality analysis through handwriting. Though psychometry may not be used in a serious commercial sense, evaluating personality and personal potential through handwriting is used. The use of graphology in business to assess people for purposes of employment is on the increase. In 1979, an estimated 85% of European firms used graphology for recruitment purposes, so that if you happen to apply to one of those firms, you might have been either selected or rejected by this process. Duncan, thank you for coming tonight. In a few moments, uh, you're going to demonstrate your expertise with the assistance of five volunteers. Now, graphologists often suggest that someone is in the wrong job based on an analysis of their handwriting. 